thank you to the faculty of the ADR cell of the new Law College in Pune in India. I'm going to be co-presenting a presentation regarding the concept of hot tubbing in international arbitration. My name is Matthew Finn and I am going to be looking at this from the position of an expert. I'm joined by my co-presenter Anand who will also be looking at this more from the position of legal counsel. I have included my CV already to the faculty, um, which may be passed on to you, but I also have given a very short summary of my experiences and credentials. I can be contacted as well via LinkedIn um, and also I've provided my email and telephone details at the end of this video in case anybody has any further questions or would like to discuss anything that's been mentioned any further. The key point really to my CV today for you is to understand really from which qualifications and credentials are important as to why I'm speaking to you today regarding hot tubbing. And the key part of my experience is that I have given evidence within uh, both traditional uh, cross-examination and I've also given evidence under hot tubbing in UK litigation. So I've been able to compare the two and today I'll be discussing my opinions and also my experiences and contrasting the two to hopefully help you to understand how hot tubbing is so different from traditional cross-examination of experts. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to wherever you are. I'm Anandai Pranadir Kumar, a lawyer with CMS, an international law firm and work in the infrastructure construction and energy disputes team. I'm permanently seated in London and primarily deal with arbitrations mainly institutional or ad hoc based and also happen to be India law qualified. Prior to my transition into CMS, I used to work with an Indian international construction conglomerate and have been exposed to the concept of hot tubbing. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity to present to the students of New College Pune and thanks to team Adhyasta and uh, specifically Ms. Shivanki Sinha. And it's also a pleasure to be co-presenting along with Matthew Finn from Ankura. Um, in this presentation, I will specifically touch upon a brief history of hot tubbing, uh, why is there a need for hot tubbing and disadvantages, if any, associated with hot tubbing. Thank you. So this video is not to look at the best hot tub products on the market and which jacuzzi uh, you should buy. When we say hot tubbing, it's a colloquial name for a process whereby experts give concurrent evidence. So in this video, uh, we are going to be examining the rules, the procedures and practice for hot tubbing and considering the advantages and disadvantages for hot tubbing. The dynamic in hot tubbing is quite different from traditional cross-examination. Hot tubbing departs from the traditional method of experts of giving evidence within sequential order, whereby they having submitted and disclosed prior written evidence separately, then are cross-examined on their reports. Concurrent evidence is presented by having the experts for both parties give testimony and answer questions and fully discuss the expert evidence together in one witness box. Therefore, the skills of an expert giving evidence under traditional cross-examination and hot tubbing are very different. The experts are from similar disciplines and they simultaneously allow each expert to engage with the court or tribunal and each other in a forum like discussion as to their differences. And hot tubbing means that the experts can give and discuss each other's opinions in real time as opposed to sequential, which also leads to a more rigorous and also sometimes a more exploration of issues. And it can increase the chance for an expert to air their own honest opinions and also to give their feedback in a less hostile environment than that seen within cross-examination. As to the concept of hot tubbing, it would be interesting to note as to its brief history. The origin of hot tubbing is to be attributed to Australia, where the courts have been utilising this method for over 20 years. Concurrent expert evidence originated in the Australian Competition Tribunal, where it was used to receive evidence from economic experts following which it branched out to other non-jury cases in the Australian courts. 
Early provision for concurrent evidence or hot tubbing are to be found in the International Bar Association rules and in the UK Technology and Construction Code guidelines. Concurrent evidence was introduced in the United Kingdom in 2013 following an inquiry by Lord Justice Jackson and a subsequent pilot scheme which was run in the TCCN Mercantile Court. The experience showed that all parties agreed that there were clear benefits from concurrent evidence. As it was more efficient, it was easier to present the evidence and to assess it, and the focus of the issues and the areas of disagreement prior to trial were clear. This meant that time was saved at trial and it was easier for the court to compare contrasting pieces of evidence. According to Lord Justice Jackson, hot tubbing saved both time and costs and it positioned the experts in the proper role of helping the court to resolve disputes and that it did away with the requirement for combat by counsel cross-examining each expert. Concurrent witness evidence or hot tubbing has been included to UK's civil procedural rules, practice direction 35 from 2013 onwards. Uh, the results of the pilot scheme from 2013 were published in 2016 by UK Civil Justice Council, which concluded that 94% of practitioners agreed that the quality of expert evidence was improved by the practice of hot tubbing. And then arises the logical question of why there is a need for hot tub. Hot tubbing may not always be the most appropriate way of taking of expert evidence, but it can be especially effective in complex cases where there are a number of difficult factual and technical issues and where the parties rely on evidence from multiple expert witnesses. In those cases, traditional cross-examination of witnesses from each side in a linear fashion can lead to confusion of the understanding of the issues, particularly when there are a large number of experts. Therefore, hot tubbing experts can allow engagement with each other, uh, can facilitate dealing with their opposing views directly and in succession in order to deeper examine the most contentious issues. The experts can also hold each to account for their opinions and are less likely to give strong partition opinions in the presence of their peers who are able to challenge those opinions directly. It has been seen in large arbitrations and in complex litigations uh, as to the benefit of hot tubbing. For instance, in the case of SSC versus Hockteef, the Scottish Court of Session before Lord Woolman uh, there were three separate sessions of hot tubbing which were involved, wherein up to seven engineering geologists had to provide evidence. This was one of the longest and most technically complex cases to come before the Scottish courts in recent years. The courts had for 91 days, 72,000 documents were lodged, including 37 export reports and 91 witness statements. This feat was achieved in SSC versus Hockteef by using hot tubbing in addition to an audit sort of cross-examination. So both parties had sufficient opportunity to test the experts evidence by hearing evidence concurrently. It was possible to focus the key issues and garner the respective positions of the experts on those issues. The majority of the respondents in the 2012 International Arbitration Survey believed that expert witness conferencing should take place more often due to the benefits of hot tubbing. In the following slide, you will note that there have been positive reception by the United Kingdom courts and specifically in three instances wherein hot tubbing's constructive and useful contribution finds mention. So how does hot tubbing work? Well, there is no definitive answer and it is a flexible system in which will largely come down to the tribunal and the way in which they would like to hear the evidence. Hot tubbing does require that the experts do sit together though, and this can cause overcrowding in large cases, particularly when there are several experts and assisting translators, and there can be insufficient space for them to work, to work with documents. I mean, this can also cause as well disjointed discussion particularly in cases where there is one more dominant expert over the other. Hot tubbing may occur prior to the main hearing and experts may be recalled into the tub um, at a preliminary or pre-hearing stage 
to be questioned about, for instance, the appropriate method of analysis to adopt, the evidence in which they should be considered in terms of giving their evidence, and also to explain progress on matters in dispute in real time before the hearing. Hot tubbing can be for some or all of the expert evidence, um, and both experts can also still go through traditional cross-examination either prior to or after the hot tubbing. The, the tribunal will normally set the agenda for the hearing and the expert evidence, and this may be an order for experts to give evidence and be cross-examined on an issue by issue basis. The tribunal may also, or parties, may also set an agenda for the taking of expert evidence concurrently on an issue by issue basis using something such as the Scott schedule or the joint statements of the experts as a basis for the document to understand why there is a difference between each expert. A typical hot tubbing process would go as follows. The experts are either sworn in or affirm and give evidence in the witness box at the same time. Once sworn in, the judge will then initiate the discussion by asking the experts in turn for their views on the issues identified in the agenda. The tribunal can then ask questions. Experts may make a short presentation to explain their view or opinion on an issue. Experts answer questions and may also ask questions when answering one expert. The tribunal may then invite the other experts to comment or ask that expert's own questions of the first expert. Counsel for the parties may ask questions. However, um, this questioning should be directed towards the correctness of the expert's view, seeking clarification of an expert view or providing further evidence on an issue. It's not for an opportunity for counsel to undertake cross-examination. The tribunal will then summarise the experts' different positions on the issue and will ask them to confirm or correct that summary. There are multiple different forms of concurrent evidence which is practised within international arbitration. These can be tribunal-led, expert-led or council-led. In April 2019, the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators issued the guidelines for witnessing conferencing in international arbitration. These helpful guidelines set out three procedural frameworks which are under options A, B and C. A being for the tribunal, B for the witnesses and C for counsel. The guidelines comprise of a checklist, the standard directions and also the case relevant directions and these are presented in the order in which they are likely to be used. So parties and tri tribunals can consult the checklist when considering whether and how to hold the witnessing conferencing. As you can see within the graphic which I've shown on the screen, the hot tubbing can become very busy. A tribunal can modify the hot tubbing and can adapt different hybrids depending on whether the variations in the role that counsel has been permitted to play uh, during the hot tubbing, different judicial attitudes towards the interaction which has been permissible among the expert witnesses whilst they're in the hot tub, and differences in judicial practice in that the tribunal will not always lead the discussion. It is really important that experts must remember that at all times that they are there to provide independent opinion in order to assist the tribunal and not to advocate the case on behalf of their paying clients. Counsel will not be able to set a question to elicit a particular answer during the hot tubbing. So instead, the experts may forget about certain documents or key points in their answers, or they may even widen the topic to include matters that counsel would not have otherwise wished to have pursued and that they had already considered as one. And this introduces a big risk um, that the issues that elicit a different answer and also can open it up and revisiting certain matters. Um, so therefore, the expert needs to be able to structure their answers in clear and logical manner without straying into areas which are not within their area of expertise or placing items in issue they already previously agreed. The ability to think on your feet is really important 
and in traditional cross-examination, the expert is taken by counsel through ex aspects of their evidence. In hot tubbing, however, the expert must be alert to what their opposite number is saying, so they may ask questions, offer alternative answers, or elaborate as necessary in real time. The formality of cross-examination can change once in the hot tub, as the language, uh, either by verbal or body, of the expert can become more relaxed and less weight is given to the evidence in question or concessions are unwittingly made. So for example, there is an increased risk that experts could slip into using non-professional language, they could become overly friendly and have a chat with their opposite number and overall forget the need for formality and the professional approach and appearance that should be obtained or maintained within uh, international arbitration. The reasoning behind the area of agreement and disagreement are set out in the joint statement, typically within expert evidence, um, which is the basis for hot tub in discussions. Experts should be fully prepared with their questioning prior to entering into the tub. In StreetMap versus Google in 2016, which was heard in the English courts by Mr. Justice Roth, he gave permission for the economist experts in the hot tub to ask questions of each other directly and to respond to each other's questions directly on areas where they were in dispute. Mr. Justice Roth described this process in his judgment as being helpful and constructive. The identification and narrowing of issues and proceedings can have the consequential shortening of the hearing and can avoid the need for the experts to re-attend the witness box. In essence, the driving force behind concurrent evidence is that it saves time, resources and cost. It assists the highlighting the duty of the expert to give independent objective evidence to the tribunal and the structured discussion allows for the resolution of the areas of disagreement while the experts, advocates and decision makers are all on the same page. The tribunal is able to focus questions on the areas of disagreement and is able to get to the root of those disagreements more quickly and effectively by putting questions directly to the expert and the expert can speak directly to the tribunal as well as to the other expert to explain complex issues without the constraints of counsel's questions. Having noted the advantages of hot tubbing, it has to be noted as to its disadvantages as well. In hot tubbing, there may be an issue as to loss of control by counsel and the expert. A loss of control of evidence by counsel if the judge or tribunal fails to identify and direct the expert in relation to the main areas in issue. There may be a loss of control of evidence by the expert because the questions of the other expert are less tiered and less focused. Hot tubbing is also a process wherein there may be a less formal approach that may lead to experts giving quick answers without thought. From a practical perspective, this means that the expert may be more likely to concede a point which may be important to their case. In hot tubbing, it is also possible to end up in a situation where in one expert, purely by their personality rather than the validity of their opinion, dominates the discussion and the other experts. Hot tubbing can further lead to temporary departure from the main subject under consideration and presents possibility for certain points being overlooked or forgotten about. Hot tubbing does save time and cost, but this is only really trial time and cost since experts still have to be instructed in the usual manner to provide the written reports and joint statements. Experts may not be properly prepared for the hot tubbing role. They may be intimidated or interrupted by the other expert. They may be tempted to become advocates themselves and they may lack the necessary skills to formulate effective probing. I've included both of our contact details. I hope that this video has been of use to you to understand hot tubbing. Um, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate but to contact us on the emails and the telephone numbers provided. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity and we trust that this session has been helpful. Should you have any questions, as Matt mentioned, feel free to contact us through our email addresses which are provided or alternatively, you can reach out to us through LinkedIn as well. Cheers and all the best.